I'm Derek Walker. I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. And today we're continuing our series on positional truth. Jesus said, John 8, 32, If you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, the truth of my word, and the truth will make you free. What is this truth that we need to know that will set us free? It's not the truth of our experiences or feelings or our natural circumstances, what we can see, feel, touch. Because Jesus said that you have to discover this truth in his word. You have to continue in his word. And then you will know that truth. You'll know it for yourself. And then you will experience the freedom that it talks about. Well, last time we saw that it's the truth. It's certainly a big part of it is the truth that of what God has done for us in the new birth. Jesus said, you see, you must be born again. And when we receive Christ, we are born again and our spirit is changed from darkness to light. And, and Jesus referred to that in verse 36. He says, this is the truth that you need to know, that if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Yes, if the Son sets you free from sin, you shall be free indeed. He will do a perfect work, in other words. It will be a dynamic work. It will be a, a, a genuine, perfect work. And that's what God does in the new birth. When we invite Jesus into our heart, he sets us free. He releases his power and his life into our spirit, and our spirit is set free from sin. Our spirit is reborn with the life and nature of Christ in it. And that's the truth we need to know, that we are born again. We're a new creation in Christ, and we, our spirit is alive with the life of God. Hallelujah. And our spirit is not under the power of sin anymore. Yes, when we receive Christ, the life of God is imparted to our spirit. We receive eternal life in our spirit, and we become a new creation. We're born again, and our spirit is truly set free from sin through the new birth. But we must know what Jesus has done for us in the spirit, to experience it. And in this series, I'm going to share with you the truth that will set you free. I'm going to show you how knowing this truth is going to change you and your self-image forever. You know, Proverbs 20, Proverbs says that as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Yes, you, the, your life will be according to the way you think about God and about yourself. And I want you to have a good look in God's mirror today and see yourself as God sees you, as you really are in your spirit. The truth of what God has done in the new birth is what I call positional truth. It's the truth of who we really are in Christ and what we have in Christ through the new birth. It's not the truth of what you do or how you feel, but it's the truth that never changes, the truth of due to your position in Christ. You see, there are two kinds of truth. There's the truth of our things that we see, feel, things in our circumstances. That's experiential truth, and that changes. It's subject to change. But what I'm talking about is positional truth, which is not subject to change. It's something that you have and you are by virtue of your birth. And that I'm, I'm a walker because I was born a walker, and really... I can't do anything to change that because it was set in me from my birth. And that is positional truth. Well, praise God, when you're born again and you're put in Christ, there are certain things that are automatically true about you and that are true about your spirit. And, and you need to know these things. And then you can walk in them and experience the reality of them for yourself. Well, positional truth is all about what God has done for you. And in you, not what you have done or not done. It's all God's grace, praise God. You know, we're up and down, but God never changes. The truth of our feelings, our circumstances, they change all the time. But positional truth depends on God, not on us. It never changes. That means it's rock solid. You can build your life on it. It's always true. Whatever you feel, whatever you do, what's happening around you makes no difference you see, to positional truth. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, whether you have a good day or a bad day, because it doesn't depend on what you've done, but it depends on what God has done. 
Hallelujah. When you're born again, he made you the righteousness of God in Christ through the new birth. Hallelujah. And it's all God's grace. He's done it for you. And that's the truth about you right now. Whatever you feel, that is the truth. That's positional truth. And you're no more and no less the righteousness of God now than the second you were born again. And in heaven, you'll not be any more righteous than you are now because God has given you the righteousness of Christ. It's a done deal. That's positional truth. You can build your life on it. Hallelujah. And, and you need to know who you are in Christ. You know, we are now, and, and this is really the grace of God, we are now under grace not under law. You know, law teaching comes along and it says, you act right or else. But grace comes along and says, you're the righteousness of God. Now act like it. Live worthy of who you are in Christ. Let me compare positional truth and experiential truth for you. Positional truth is not an experience. It's not an expression. It's beyond your natural senses. You can only know it from the word of God. But experiential truth is what is manifested to your senses. Positional truth is not progressive. It's perfect at salvation. It's what God has already accomplished in your spirit in the new birth. It's a perfect work of grace. And it's always true, that independent of your feelings and works. It's eternal. It's unchanging. But our experience always changes, you see. And the experience of our salvation is changing. It's growing. It's an ongoing process, but positional truth is rock solid. It never changes. Positional truth is not related to human merit. Experiential truth, though, depends on whether we do the word, whether we know the word, because the more we know the word and do the word, the more we'll experience his blessing. Well, all believers are equal in positional truth. We're all equally the righteousness of God in Christ, but we're all different in our experience of the truth because it depends whether we do the word or we don't do. Positional truth is really true, whether you feel it or not, because it's already accomplished in your spirit. And knowing positional truth is very important for you because it's the foundational truth that we need to change our self-image and to build a strong Christian life. You see, if we build our faith and our Christian lives on the solid rock of positional truth, we'll have stable, fruitful lives. But if we build instead on the sinking sands of our feelings, our experiences, our circumstances, they're always changing, then the house of our Christian life will not survive well when the storms of life hit it. We must build our life on the foundation of the rock of positional truth. That's the only way forward. Well, I want to share with you some examples of positional truth. First of all, we have a new relationship with God. Before, we have, uh, before our position in Adam meant that we were sinners under the condemnation and the wrath of God. But now in Christ, we're forgiven. We're justified. We're made righteous with the righteousness of Christ. Praise God. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, because you are in Christ, you are forgiven, you are justified, you are declared righteous by God. You have peace with God. Hallelujah. More than that, we are also sons of God. Because Galatians 3.26 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. We are sons of God. Hallelujah. That doesn't change. Hallelujah. We're in a new kingdom now. Before we were in the kingdom of darkness. But Colossians 1.13 says that he has delivered us. He's done it. It's a done deal. He's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, from the power of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. We in whom? In Christ. We have redemption. It's ours. And we are in his kingdom. Praise God. And more than that, we have a new inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. In Christ. That's our position. And in that position, every spiritual blessing is ours. That's our inheritance. Praise God. 
Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says, In him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Hallelujah. Bodily. And you are complete in him. I'm complete in Christ. There's nothing lacking in what God has provided for me in Christ. I have a full inheritance. You are complete in him, it says. In Christ, I'm complete. He's done it all for me. Hallelujah. I have a new destiny in Christ. Romans 8.29 says, Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, hallelujah, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Thank you, Lord. I'm sharing the same destiny as Jesus Christ, the destiny of glory and perfection. Why? Because I'm in Christ. And because I'm in Christ, I automatically share his destiny. That's the grace of God. And then again, we have a new life and a new nature in our spirits. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, that's our position. It automatically follows that he is a new creation. In his spirit, he's a brand new spirit, a new man. Old things, that's the old man, the old spirit has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm a new spirit. Hallelujah. Now, all things are of God. All things now in my brand new created spirit, my recreated human spirit, all things are of God. Hallelujah. God's done a perfect work. There's no sin in my spirit. There's no, there's no error in my spirit. Now in my mind, in my body, yes, sin, there, I still sin and so forth, but my spirit is a perfect work of God. And as I learn to live out of my spirit, then that righteousness will be expressed in my life. Hallelujah. So let's explore now, because I can only live out of from my spirit as I know who I am. As I look in the mirror and see who I am, then I can live that out. So let's explore what God's done for us in the new birth. You know, we've seen that our reborn spirit is a brand new creation. God's put eternal life in our spirit, and our spirit is therefore alive with the life of God. Isn't it good to be alive to God? Hallelujah. Before we were born again, we were dead in our sins, but now we're alive to God. Praise God. I'm full of the life of God, that we should be declaring these things over our life. In Christ, I'm alive to God. Praise God. Well, Jesus described the new birth. That's our foundation, the teaching of Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. He says, it, it's, he describes it as a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. He says that what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. It's a birth of our spirit. Do not marvel, he says, that I said to you, you must be born again. He says, you need a supernatural birth of your spirit. Nicodemus asked him in verse 9, how can these things be? How can this happen for me? And Jesus then told him how, and he summarized it. In verse 16, a verse you know very well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, trusts in him, receives him, should not perish in spiritual death, but have eternal life. That means possess eternal life. And Jesus is saying, ha having being born again, having the new birth, is to have or possess eternal life in our spirit. That's, and how do we do that? It's by believing in Jesus Christ and his death for us. When we believe and receive Christ as God's son, God infuses our spirit with eternal life, which removes all spiritual death from us. Hallelujah. Boy, being born again is receiving God's Zoe, his eternal life. That's why Jesus said in John 6, 47, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, he who trusts in me, has now, not in heaven, but now he possesses in himself eternal life in his spirit. What's our reborn spirit like? We've seen already 2 Timothy 1, 7. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and sound mind. That's what our spirit is like. The reborn spirit is, a, is perfect. Hallelujah. Not many people realize this. Your reborn spirit is perfect in righteousness and holiness. That's what my Bible tells me. Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Not you will be complete in him. You are complete in him. 
Praise God. Your spirit is complete in Christ. It's perfect. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, he, whom, he made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us, that we might become, in, by very nature, we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. We're not just declared righteous by God, but we have become righteous by nature, in our spirit. And that's why 1 Corinthians 6.17 says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Because we're the righteousness of God in Christ. There's nothing between us and God. Hallelujah. You see, the old spirit that we had was called the old man. It's not reference to your father. The old man was your old spirit, which has been crucified with Christ. Romans 6.6. 6. And our, your new reborn spirit is called the new man. It says... It says, you have put off the old man. You see, that's gone. You've put off the old man with its deeds, and you have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Yes, the new man is according to the image of, of God, of Christ. Hallelujah. And it's created by Christ. It's perfect. Ephesians 4.24 says it very clearly. It says, we are now and the new man, which was created according to God. That means in his image, in true righteousness and holiness. Praise God. Your spirit has been recreated according to the blueprint of Christ. It's in the perfect image of Christ, in his holiness. Hallelujah. Wow. What about 1 John 3, 9? It says that your reborn spirit does not sin. See, it says, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed, the life of Christ, remains in him. And he cannot sin. Your reborn spirit cannot sin, because he has been born of God. Hallelujah. Now, we very well know that you are capable of sinning, but that's your flesh leading you to sin, you know, and you need to confess that and get right. But your spirit does not lead you into sin if you're born again. Your spirit cannot sin. 1 John 5.18 says the same. We know that whatsoever is born of God does not sin. You see, but he who is born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Do you realize Satan cannot touch your spirit if you're born again? Why? Because the armor of God automatically protects your spirit. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit and the wicked one cannot touch him. You have a perfect reborn spirit. This is great news. 2 Peter 3, 4 tells us that our reborn spirit is called the hidden man of the heart. It describes it as an incorruptible, beautiful, gentle, peaceful spirit that is precious to God. He says, rather, let it be the hidden man of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Notice it says this gentle, quiet spirit is incorruptible incorruptible hallelujah well the love of god is in our spirit our reborn spirit is born of god and therefore it contains his spiritual dna his nature praise god we're a love child of a love god we've been generated out of the spirit of god hallelujah and the holy spirit has poured his love into our spirit Romans 5.5 5 says, The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has poured his love into our hearts, into our spirits. And so our spirit is full of God's love. And if we know that, then we can walk in love and express that. Through the new birth, the fruit of the Spirit is already in your spirit with all its flavors of love, joy, and peace. That's what Galatians 5.22 says. The fruit of the Spirit. That means what is issuing out of your spirit, what is being produced by your spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. With the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is your reborn spirit. If you could see yourself in the Spirit, you would see all these life forces flowing out of your spirit. Love, joy, and peace. That's who you are in the Spirit. You're a perfect work of God. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. You see, who is he that loves is the one that's born of God, because 
When you're born of God, God's love is in your spirit. God's love fills your spirit. The reborn spirit contains God's love. And he who is reborn has a spirit of love in him. And so you have an ability to love God and love people because you've been remade in the image of the God of love. Hallelujah. And if you know you have a spirit of love, you can express that love and walk in love toward people. Hallelujah. Yes, you can love. You can forgive whether you feel it or whether you don't, because God has poured his love into you by his Holy Spirit. That's positional truth. That will never change. Hallelujah. You have the love of God in you. You have the life of God in you, and you're a life-giving spirit. Let me show you this scripture to finish. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, says, It is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. Christ is a life-giving spirit. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You see, as was the man of dust, so are those who are made of the dust. And as is the heavenly man, so are also are those who are heavenly, who are born again. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. You see... In Adam, we were in the image of Adam. But now we're in Christ, the new man. We become like Christ. And he is described as a life-giving spirit. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. And that means we are a life-giving spirit because we're in the image of Christ. Hallelujah. We, I am a life-giving spirit. Praise God. I want you to say this with me right now. Boldly. I am in Christ. I am a born-again child of God. There is no condemnation for me in Christ. I am one spirit with the Lord. I have eternal life in me. God's love and life is in my spirit. The life of God is in me. I'm a love child of a love God. God's love is poured out in my spirit. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. My spirit is dead to sin and alive to God. I am a new creation in Christ. I'm a new man created in God's image. I am his workmanship created in Christ for good works. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a life-giving spirit. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world.